When I was five, I decided I'd be an inventor. Ray Kurzweil did just that, as Transcendent Man points out. Among his inventions were the first reading machine for the blind and the keyboard synthesizer that became the standard among musicians. Despite those successes, the film's creator believes Kurzweil is still relatively unknown. Our hope is that we're introducing Ray to a mainstream audience. So I think 90%, 95% of the people out there who will watch the film will be introduced to Ray for the first time. The central theme of Transcendent Man is Kurzweil's belief that death will not always be final. Well, here's to living forever. <laughs> That's not just a salutation in her family. I don't think immortal would be the words that he would use, but Ray firmly believes that he can catch a bridge to a bridge to a bridge, and that's the metaphor that he has created. In one scene, Kurzweil talks with actor William Shatner about what he is doing right now to prolong his life. Well, mostly I'm reprogramming my biochemistry with lots of supplements. I take about 200 pills a day. Kurzweil believes advances in genetics, nanotechnology, and robotics, or artificial intelligence, will eventually lead to a race of beings that are part human and part machine, or AIs. I mean, there's nothing in our biological bodies and brains that we won't be able to recreate and, in fact, enhance. We'll create AIs that are real people. Kurzweil refers to that time as the singularity. There are those who say it's ridiculous to assume that we can, we can predict what will happen with artificial intelligence one way or the other. I think Ray makes a pretty good case, though, that if we continue to practice um, and look upon our better angels, that these AIs will kind of really become who we are. But Transcendent Man does present opposing views. Engineering a better human being is going to be a daunting task. Dr. William B. Hurlbut is a neuroscience professor at Stanford University. We shouldn't just arrogantly think we have transcended the wisdom of thousands of years of human experience. Hugo de Garris, a professor of computer science, is working on an artificial brain himself. But he believes Kurzweil is naive about the future. For him to hear somebody like me saying, well, <laughs> these, these inventions may end up causing the worst war that humanity's ever had, freaks him out. He doesn't want to hear such things. The people imagine uh, destructive, dystopian scenarios, but in fact, technology has been the only thing that's enabled us to overcome problems. I think Ray is naturally an optimist, and um, I think he does have to work at looking at the downside of technologies. That may be because Kurzweil has a particular and very real goal in mind. Uh, I do plan to bring back my father. Ray's not talking about bringing back his father in a, you know, Frankensteinian kind of way. Really what he's talking about is, let's just use the example of a virtual reality model where his father would exist in a virtual um, simulation. Kurzweil's father, Frederick, was a composer. He died of a heart attack when Ray was 22. Kurzweil kept his father's letters, music manuscripts, photos, even financial records, 50 boxes of documents. So with all of that information, I believe an AI would be able to create someone that would seem very much like my father. At its core, I think the film is a father and son story. I think um, his father's death um, was a big, uh, a big thing in his life. Although driven by a personal longing for his father, Ray Kurzweil wants everyone to know the singularity is near. He has shared his belief through books, lectures, and now the documentary Transcendent Man. Susan Logue, VOA News, Washington. The amount of data we're getting is doubling every year. And we're learning that we can actually take this data.